Greetings everyone, Ben here from The Virtual Economist and welcome to part 2 in my unusual trading guide. Now that you know how to get unusuals and why you might want to get into unusual trading, it is important to know what makes an unusual good and what makes an unusual bad. I know you guys might want to jump right on into buying and selling unusuals, but if you don't know much about the unusuals you're trading, you're going to make some pretty crappy trades. Like. Both of these are 50 keys, but I'm just going to put this out there. I think one of them is just a little tad tiny bit better than the other. And after watching this video, I hope that you guys will be able to figure that out just a little bit better. All right, let us begin. If you haven't seen part one in the series yet, make sure to go ahead and check that out. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link right here as well as a link down in the description below so you can go ahead and check that out. Trust me, topics in this video might make a little bit more sense if you have seen the first part already. Okay, so what makes an unusual good? For the purpose of this video, I will only talk about unusual hats. I'll make a whole episode focusing on unusual taunts and weapons in another video. There are two main factors that determine a hat's worth. Number one, it's class, and number two, it's effect. As a general rule, soldier unusuals are usually the best, as a crap ton of people main soldier. A second would definitely be the scout, for similar reasons. Next, the pyro, demo, medic, sniper, and spy are all pretty mid-range. They are not generally loved or hated. The low-end classes are heavy and engineer. Not very many people main them, and a lot of their hats are regarded as ugly. I also really, really need to stress that just because I say heavy and engineer hats are the worst, that that does not mean that you should not trade for them. Oftentimes, due to this very stigma, you can get some pretty ridiculous deals on these hats. This fact can never be underestimated. It is also important to note that, of course, as it goes with cosmetic items, the best looking hats sell the best. As a general rule of thumb, hats that look like hats sell better than hats that look like, well, I'm not quite even sure what that looks like. The second factor is the effect. What effects are good? Part 3 in the series will focus specifically on effects. Likewise, I'll keep this pretty vague for now. The older the effect typically, the better it is. Great looking old effects such as green energy will sell far better than a newer effect such as disco beatdown even if it still looks pretty damn good. Again, I will cover all the unusual effects in great detail in my next video, so I'm keeping it basic for now. If you think you have a great looking soldier hat with an old effect, chances are it is really expensive. If you have an ugly engineer hat with a newer effect such as dead presidents, chances are it is pretty cheap. However, there's still a decent amount of questions you have to ask yourself before you can determine whether your hat is good or bad. Think of these as just a giant list of exceptions. If your hat sucks in class and effect, but has one of these exceptions, it might be really good. There is a lot of these, but I do think they are all important to know. Feel free to go back and rewatch the video if you didn't get it. The first question you might want to ask yourself is, is it all class? All class unusuals sell way better than unusuals with just a single class. Obviously, this makes sense because people would rather have a one size fits all unusual than two individual unusuals for different classes. Next, ask yourself, is it a misc? Misks are hats that can be worn with other hats, allowing for multiple effects on the same character. Obviously, you look really swaggy wearing a crap ton of effects, and being a misc can hugely increase a hat's value. Next, ask yourself, is it a robo hat? A robo hat is basically just a robotic hat that was released during the robotic boogaloo update. These are pretty much robotic versions of hats already in the game. As you can imagine, they look way uglier than the normal versions of the hats. Due to this, this can severely decrease the price and sellability of an unusual. In addition, ask yourself, is it themed? Themed unusuals are basically just unusuals in which the hat and effect look very good and combo well with each other. This is very objectionable, so a lot of people just say their hat is themed when it is clearly not themed at all. Other people use the fact that their unusual is themed to try to sell it for way, way higher than anybody would possibly pay for it. Remember that unusual from the start of the video? Yeah, that masked flies Sammy cap. There is no way anyone would ever offer 50 keys for that, yet the seller still tries to sell it for that absurd 
price. An example of a real themed unusual might be a blizzardy storm soldier slope scopers. This hat is literally just a hat with snowboarding goggles on it, so it would make sense that it would theme well with a blizzardy storm effect. And no, any sniper hat plus flies does not make it themed. Additionally, it is important to ask yourself the question, how many sellers are there of this hat? If there's a lot of sellers of a particular unusual, chances are they aren't going to pick you to make an offer on. This makes sense because the more sellers there are, the more choices the buyer has to choose from. So if there's a lot of sellers of a particular hat, chances are you aren't going to be able to sell it for as much. However, the reverse is also true. If you're the only seller of a particular hat on Outpost, chances are you're going to be able to sell it for more because all people offering on that hat are going to have to offer on you. Better yet, if your unusual is one of one, meaning that there is only one version of that hat plus effect in the entire world, you will be the only one that anyone could ever offer on. Basically, that means you could theoretically sell it for whatever price you wanted. In practice, however, that is usually not the case, but many unusual collectors do target one of one hats that don't suck. So, if you have a one of one hat, you do have a greater chance of getting good offers, particularly from collectors. Lastly, ask yourself, is it duped? Duped means the unusual was duplicated using glitches in the past. There is literally nothing different with duped unusuals, but they display a red message in their backpack.tf history. To find this, locate an unusual on backpack.tf and right click it and hit history to view. While there is nothing different about them, some people ask that you sell it for less because of this, while others don't care. Of course, this is a personal thing, so do not get frustrated if someone refuses to trade just because your unusual is duped. So, those are basically all the major exceptions that there are. Keep in mind that people are going to try to create their own exceptions to make their hat seem way better than it actually is. Just make sure to keep that in mind, because a lot of things they make up don't actually add to the value of a hat. For example, Halloween spells. A lot of people think they do, but they don't. They, they, they don't. The more experience you get trading though, the more you'll be able to decipher these ads and be able to figure out what actually makes unusuals good and what doesn't. Because at the end of the day, if you have like a really crappy unusual with a really crappy effect that happens to be one of one, you know, it might not actually be that good. Or maybe you have a robo unusual that would normally be pretty bad, but happens to have a very high tier effect. That hat might be really good. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down, it is all relative. The more experience you have, the more you'll be able to discern what is good and not. I am not, however, undermining the importance of these facts. By knowing just what you learned in this video, it should help you a ton in deciphering what a good trade is and maybe what a bad trade is, too. If you know a little bit about unusual trading already, you may have noticed that I did not include gifted unusuals in my list of exceptions. Gifted unusuals used to be a big problem and would severely decrease the price of an unusual. This tag was given to an unusual after somebody gave it to another user using gift trap. However, during the tough break update, Valve finally decided to be awesome for once and add code to the game that allowed you to remove the tag when restoring an item in your inventory. Because of this, there is nothing wrong with the gifted tag anymore. Woohoo! Honestly, this was the best thing Valve had done to TF2 in the last year. It's pretty awesome. Now that you might be starting to get a grasp on what makes an unusual good, it begs the question, how might I know how much an unusual is in the first place? Isn't there a set price for each unusual? Yes, there is. To look up an unusual's actual value, hop over to backpack.tf and look under the unusual price list. Here, you can find the prices for pretty much every unusual. It is important to keep in mind that these prices are based off community sales in the past and likewise may not be super duper accurate. While some of these prices may be a little bit outdated, ultimately I do think that having a giant price list on Backpack.tf is a good thing. Others will argue against it, but I do think it creates a stability in the economy and promotes trading. Keep in mind, unpriced unusuals are really hard to sell just because people don't want to risk buying an unusual that they might have to resell for far lower than they actually paid for it just because they don't know the general price range of the unusual. 
So, I think backpack.tf does good in this regard. If you just scroll down through the unusual list, you might notice that some of the rules I said before are very clear in here. For example, we see unusual misks being up at the top of the list and being very expensive. On the other hand, we see robo hats being very low on the list and likewise being very cheap. So, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Join me in the next episode where I talk about all the unusual effects. And make sure to subscribe to get the next part of the series. As always, thank you everyone for watching. See you later.